I think it's just important to know that like that's the process like going on dates that suck feeling deflated not connecting with people getting rejected getting ghosted occasionally crying sometimes like that's the dating process it's not that you're doing it wrong necessarily it's like it's rare to find real connection <laughs> Hey, welcome back. We are not for everyone. I'm Jess. I'm Caroline. And this is a podcast hosted by a hater and a lover. Happy to be here. We're doing a for you episode today. Um, these are some of my favorites because we go deep on a specific topic and like, man, we really, we really have something to get into with this dating topic. There's too much to say. I know. Have you guys heard of dating? It's fucking <laughs> people. People are doing it. People are doing people it. Are and doing I'm so it. Good. People are doing the heck out of it. Crazy style. I would say it's so animal rare style. To... Animal style. No. <laughs> Stop. That's a burger it's topping. Like... Okay. That's an in and out. Bur- that's how oh. you get your burgers at in and out. Yeah. I'm not being oh. sexual. Please. I would never. <laughs> okay. I don't know how I was supposed to know that that was a burger topping. Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm like really locked into burger. Um, burger burger culture? culture. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Big okay. burger. They <laughs> got its grip on you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Animal style, I guess. Yeah. How are you though? How was your week? Was I'm it good. animal style? <laughs> yeah, my week was total animal style. Emphasis on animal. Um, it was. It was getting back from vacation. Too much. Too much vacation. And what too a much complaint. Being gone. Yeah. Too, <laughs> what a complaint to have. But it really is my complaint. I don't really like to travel. I don't really like to leave my home. And this the last like month has been pretty much I think I've spent like five days in DC. Oh um, my God. I'm so fortunate. I'm so fortunate. I'm so lucky, blah, 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 whatever else you need me to say. And also I'm tired. <laughs> I'm yeah. really happy to be home now. I was getting behind on work. It's like that kind of thing. So I'm super happy to be home and sedentary. Yeah. Yes, stay sedentary as long as you possibly can can before it go. like sweeps you up again the the whims of the world. Um cuz sometimes yeah. I feel like I end up going away and I'm like did I even choose this? Like did I even plan this? All of a sudden I'm just here and I haven't been in my own bed in weeks and like what's even yeah. going on? So I get it. Um How I had you? a pretty animal style night last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not really, kind of. So I've told you, but I don't think I've told the listeners about my concept that I've started over the last few months called First Fridays, where the first Friday of every month, I kind of just like facilitate a happy hour for a bunch of my friends. And I, it's all it is, is like, you guys will know that every month on the first Friday, this is happening. It's always happening whether I can come or not, whether you can come or not, doesn't matter. It's happening. And I send out a text at the beginning of the week being like, this is the bar that we're going to go to and don't RSVP. I don't care. Like, I want it to be so low pressure. (laughs) I'm literally- Don't even show up. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. If it's just me, great. I'll stay for a drink and I'll go home. If people show up- Delete my number. Delete my number. See if I care. Yeah. I just want it to be like a spontaneous, low pressure- yeah. option for hanging out regularly and like yeah. having a big group of friends come together if they're available so yesterday was the first friday of august and so it was first fridays and i had a really chaotic week and really really busy with work and podcast and lots of different things and then yesterday i spent the day at my co-working space i'm giving a long version of this story it's like not that necessary but um i spent the day at my co-working space cranking stuff out I thought I'd have time to go home, leave my car here, and then go to happy hour, but turned out that I just drove straight to happy hour, and I made the decision at like 5 p.m. I felt it in my bones. I was like, I will be leaving my car here overnight because I want to get drunk, and so this morning, I took two buses. I transferred buses. I was being economical instead of doing an Uber back to where my car was, and I got it, and I felt like such a like rebel i was like oh my god she left her car on the other side of town because she was like (laughs) having margaritas who is she wait i did the same thing last night and i never do that first of all i'm never never drunk i'm never drunk and i'm never not 
parked in my own driveway because I'm never Truly anywhere. same. Truly, Truly same. I also, I actually left my, my, where's my car right now? Actually, I think it's at my parents' <laughs> house. I wasn't, I wasn't drunk at my parents' house, but somehow the car got there. I think because my sister drove me there. And then, then I was still drunk when I got there. Right. And I, I didn't want to be there anymore. So I did, I did Uber. I did Uber home. That's really, oh my God, so animal style for both Thank of you. Us. Yeah, I felt really cool about it. I, I don't yeah. know why. I feel like I've pretty much never done that before, but I have friends oh. who do that sometimes. And I'm always nice. like, wow, that's really like city living of that's them. That's really <laughs> fucking city. Wow, it's so city. What I think is the most relatable is just that feeling that bubbling feeling where you're like oh I'm gonna get shit-faced yeah oh I'm, I'm about to black out which I would say usually that starts with me loudly announcing that I'm not gonna drink if I <laughs> if I loudly announce I'm not drinking it pretty much guarantees a blackout and it's not like I'm not fucking with you like I believe what I'm saying as well right right yeah yeah. Well, you can't plan a blackout. Like there's something, there's also you something can. messed up you about actually... the opposite. You can, I've done it before in college, but it's not, it's better it's not, not to, it's better, to, it's better to say it was, a, it it's was better to be like, oh no, that's not even happening. And then it just uh, happens and you're like, oops, as opposed oopsie. to making it your intention. It's a little right. more like questionable. Yeah. So it, true. it was the that. bubbling feeling at 2 PM on Friday. I was like, oh shoot, this isn't going to uh, be just a yeah. couple beers this oh, is shit. gonna be something this is gonna be something different I just really had you're, a week that's so I, funny you're feeling like pre-drunk you're like this is a strong one this is gonna be pretty pretty tough yeah yeah and Maybe. I haven't done that in a while and it felt amazing and only two people oh, three good. people came to first Great. Fridays didn't matter I was like let's keep it flowing yeah you, and then I had like, to convince my friend to hang out longer I was like so I want you to know that I'm planning on leaving my car here so we can go wherever we want like we can keep the night going like I was crazy I was a little bit crazy <laughs> she was like I I've actually had half a beer and I'm ready for bed thank you though yeah, yeah she was mm -hmm. like I can do one maybe two more drinks and I was like great two it'll be and two <laughs> a great time and Too I was still in bed by 10 30 and I still went to the gym this morning I'm just wow. doing it all no you should feel proud and you took two buses this morning I took two buses after going that's to the gym that's crazy that's yeah crazy. never again oh. but happy to have been a city girl for 24 yeah. hours serving the community animal style <laughs> that's great all right shall, shall we get into the animal animal style the animal of it all yeah let's the animal it. of it all okay um yeah, so today we're going to be talking about all things dating. We asked you guys on Instagram to send us your dating struggles that you wanted to talk about. Um, yeah. So we have a mix of things to share based on your input. I mean, we're just going to see where it goes. I feel like we're going to have lots of tangents and stories and advice. And it's probably not necessarily good advice, but we're trying our best. And just like take yeah. what feels good. And if it doesn't feel good, then like leave me alone. It's I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> I love you getting more and more confrontational as this podcast goes on. I so just feel alone, like bro. this is a topic that people get really opinionated oh, about. Oh yes. And old oh, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Like it, well, I don't well, yeah. I'm just going to tell you what I would tell my friend. And yeah, that doesn't, my friends rarely take my advice. So, <laughs> you know, do what you will. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. I feel like above all, before we dive into it, I don't know. You can get, you can collect lots of advice. I, I, I do. I am excited to do this episode. Um, not because I think I have all the greatest dating advice in the world. I think everyone who knows me thinks I'm like psychotic <laughs> because dating's hard and I get confused a lot, but anything I have learned, uh, it's because someone wiser than me has shared it with me. So I don't know, sharing all like the good stuff that has helped me, um, from all my friends who are smarter than me. Um, some stuff I've learned from experience, some stuff I still don't really understand. And yeah, if something resonates, great. Uh, basically really I think it's just a numbers game for everyone mm -hmm. like I think that's like I don't even think that's advice it's just like if that helps calm me down I really think it's just like a numbers game um when you're in the right place but hopefully there's a couple things you can do to keep from putting yourself in the wrong place yeah and make it a little easier on yourself and I think yeah. also like 
not lose yourself to the process because something that I was constantly feeling when I was dating and especially in this world of app dating was like uh, I would just not be able to have a grip anymore on like who I am and what I want and what I'm doing and prioritizing myself and my time and my energy and the things that I don't want to settle on like all of that is feels impossible when you're you have all these people at your literally at your fingertips like in your phone and you don't know you don't know who to trust you don't know what to do you don't know if you even want to meet them or not but you feel like you kind of should because that's what you're supposed to do like there's just so much weirdness the should Mm. can really beat you down I think it's so unhelpful Uh, one of the biggest things I did all the time was like taking breaks if I got fed up if it was feeling like a chore which it most often did like take a break I feel like it'd be like three weeks of dating then like two months off like three weeks Mm -hmm. of two months off because also if you're going in and you're pissed off or you're tired or you're not feeling optimistic you're you're not able to give people a chance like you're not going in with a good like energy and attitude like give yourself a break also you don't want to make your life miserable like yeah you know in the meantime your life is happening but um yeah I definitely felt that pressure of like well if I'm not going out all the time and meeting people all the time, then I don't deserve to meet anyone. It's like, uh, no, you should do it in like a good state. Yeah. There's a balance yeah. to like putting in effort and taking a fucking break. Yeah. It's, it's not that rewarding to spend all this time. Yeah. Especially on apps, like spending all this time with fucking strangers. Yeah. It makes you feel crazy. I, that's what, that's what like drove me wild all the time. I was like, all this time I'm spending with fucking strangers. Mm-hmm. Like, it is so easy to lose yourself. You're like, what, do I even know how to hold a conversation? Oh yeah. Do you ever look at your, just to take a quick step back because both of us are now in relationships with people that we met on dating apps. Do you ever like have those moments with your boyfriend where you're like, you're a stranger. Like uh, two months ago, I didn't know you existed or however, however long it's been. I still, he's still a stranger. Like I've known him, (laughs) I've known him for like, what month is it? April, May, June, July. I've known him for like four months. Like we're basically still strangers. We just like to kiss. Like that's right. pretty much strangers all who it like is. To kiss. We're, we're just like strangers who like to kiss. Yeah. And I think that continues for a while until you're like, oh man, we've really been kissing now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still have the moment very rarely, but I still sometimes have the moment of like, we've been together, my boyfriend and I for a year and a half or so. And it's like, I don't who are you in my bed totally. sometimes yeah. very occasionally yeah I um, think it's it is you a weird really place ever, you don't really ever know anybody place. yeah yeah okay. um you already hit on a couple of things that I had written down like taking breaks I feel like so many times that is what the answer is it's like if you're just spinning constantly if you're not having fun with it anymore if you're not like being able to show up as yourself if you're not being able to like get off the app sometimes like the addiction of just being on hinge and swiping and commenting and like spending all your downtime doing that that was a sign to me that I needed to take a break too um looking at people's profiles and being like so negative so critical getting a message from somebody and interpreting it as like oh fuck this guy even if yeah it really wasn't anything that bad it's just like you're you're ready to perceive everything with a negative lens like you know when you are feeling that way or you can notice it after some time I think if you're in touch with yourself and you know kind of like what your normal baseline is and those are the times to definitely hit pause you can go back they'll always fucking be there and you'll see the same people on there too like you'll be able to have another chance to talk to that person or whatever it might be I also feel like the other, the time that was most important for me to take breaks, I would take breaks that I was just like tired of dating, which was basically all the time. Um, Or I want to emphasize, I think one of the most, I really think uh, the key, if you're presumably like dating in a serious way, because you want to find a a long-term relationship, I think um, maybe like one of the most important prerequisites is like not spending time with the wrong people which sounds Mm. maybe obvious but I think like I've been in the place and it's easy for a lot of people to be like okay well this girl or this guy I'm spending time with 
they're not quite the right person. And like, I'll speak for myself. I would, you know, I'd date a guy and be like, okay, I know he's not interested in a long-term thing. It's not a serious thing. And like, that's fine. I'm not either. I, I know what this is. Like, it's going to be casual. We don't have the right thing. It's just going to be casual. Yes. Sometimes he upsets me, but like, I know this isn't what I want long-term either. And we can just hang out and have fun and be fucking sexy. And, um, and then eventually I'll meet somebody else. But in the meantime, you're exposing yourself to like less than good treatment, even without this being a, a bad girl or a bad guy. Like if you want, you get used to that standard, you get used to the standard of a hookup. Um, and so the next person you have to meet has to only like be slightly improved from that level of treatment. Whereas presumably like I was looking for someone who treats me amazingly. And um, so to continue to expose yourself to someone who's treating you like any less than the way you want to be treated. It's, it, it does, it comes at a price. It mm. really comes at a price. It does get you used to a standard. I think I found I could even forget what my standard was supposed to be until I stopped seeing those people. And I think the other reason like to not waste time with those people, even though you could, and even though it's kind of fine and maybe it's not leaving you in tears all the time. And like, sometimes it's fun. They're not all terrible. Um, but the other thing is like, it sedates you a little bit if like you always have a date each week and like mm. okay it's not a boyfriend and like it's not perfect but like it's fine for now it sedates you a little bit and then you don't have like the hunger to actually work towards finding a real connection I think it's like you know finally quitting the job that you really want to get out of and if you don't have the paycheck, you're going to work really hard to get the next job or for, for a million things like cutting yourself off from it. Otherwise, it can make you a little a little lazy and take that hunger away like you need that hunger, even if it means you have no dates, even if it means you're just sitting at home like fine. That's better than spending extensive time with the wrong people. I really, yeah. really believe that. Yeah, I really like that. I never thought of it that way before until you shared that with me in a previous episode. And I was like, oh, wow, that's a great way to frame it because I do think it's true um I think it gets at a little bit this idea of like knowing what you're looking for and also kind of like being honest with yourself about what they're <laughs> looking for like if if there's clearly a mismatch in what you're interested in compared with what the person you're seeing is interested in like that's something that you should take at face value like believe what people show you what what's that quote believe um when people show you who they are believe them yeah it, it's it like if they're treating you like yeah. a like a side piece then like trust your gut when you start to feel that way and believe it unless that's what you're down for at the time I don't know no shame but like I mean I assume if people are listening to this episode they're I we I think let's just assume they're looking to date seriously this is not a hookup advice yeah so yeah yeah um, but then the other thing with that, that my therapist used to always encourage me to do was like, I was looking for something serious and she would be like, what do you have on your apps? Like put that in the field where it says looking for put relationship or put long-term or whatever the option is. Mm -hmm. And I remember being very, very like hesitant to do that. I was like, well, I don't know, because like, maybe I'm flexible and like, one of the early questions that people mm. sometimes ask on a dating app is like, oh, what are you on here for? What are you looking for? And for a long time, even though I knew deep down that I was looking for a relationship and I was looking for something real, I would couch it in how I answered that question. I would be yeah. like, I'm looking for like the real thing, but also like not trying to force anything and, you know, really just interested in meeting people and seeing where it goes. And who is that's... interested in meeting people? Literally never in my life. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, why did I ever say that? I said that too. Never been fucking true. Exactly. Not interested. I'm interested in unknowing people and mm -hmm. I'm here because I want to date. Yeah. I think there's God. something like you have to be, you have to be real with yourself. You have to like, yeah, accept that you are looking for something serious. I feel like at least when I was on the apps and single and dating a lot, that there was like a a negative connotation to that in my mind or something. Well, like I didn't want like, to admit it. Yeah. Because I maybe I was desperate. I don't well, know. Like to, which to I me, wasn't. To <laughs> me, there's a fear 
um, I think for a lot of people, there's a fear in like, well, what if that scares someone away? Then that's not right. the fucking, then that person's not looking for something serious. Like to me, I think it's, it's, it's difficult. And I got into danger a lot thinking about, I'm going to use the word men because I was dating men and it's going to be whatever. I'm going to say men. Um, it was like, it got, I got into like dangerous territory a lot thinking abstractly about like an abstract man. Mm. And like how they would respond to things like me saying I'm looking for something serious. And it was helpful to instead picture like a man who's in a relationship that I really respect. And he's like a really dedicated guy. He's like a great guy and he's a committed guy and he loves that he's in a relationship and imagining him as a single person encountering someone who said they were looking for a relationship. Like that guy would not write you off. That's not a crazy thing to say. Like right. all the things you want there um when you meet the right person none of it's crazy even if you say something that that's like well okay that's a little weird if they're like interested in you they'll at least hear you out so I think it's like it's only weird with the wrong person basically. yeah and then that's data that you should like that that's important information it's important information yeah. to know that that was Let, oh that's them. a filter that's a yeah, filter exactly yeah you don't want those people people who will see i'm looking for something serious on a profile and like don't want to match with you get them the fuck out yeah great less conversations i have to have yep um speaking of filters i feel like a question yes. that came through a lot was yes. how strict to be with your preferences and filters on dating apps like how judgmental to be when looking at profiles and balancing this thing of like not wanting to settle, but also wanting to stay open. Mm. Um, I found that so difficult when mm. I was dating a lot. Not so much the filter part. I think I left my filters relatively open, but I was swiping left on everyone. Like I was saying no oh. to almost everyone. Or oh, okay. I would get in spells where I was at least. Like there would be like a week when I was really negative and really critical and I was saying no to everyone that popped up on my page. And then there would be a week where I'd be like, that really didn't work well for me. Let me be more open-minded and let me not care as much about, you mm -hmm. know, if they're exactly my type or if they have like the ideal job or background or whatever. And I would just constantly like overcorrect in either direction. I don't know if I really ever figured out the answer to this question yeah, it's probably it's really different hard. for everyone but what was your approach or like do you have wisdom there because I don't know <laughs> if I do I feel like there's like a million different answers to it um and it also probably depended on my mood um I think it depends on like what like I don't know hold on let me get my thoughts together hmm. um yeah like you probably do have some deal breakers or some requirements. I don't think you should have a ton. I don't even necessarily think they should be like, I think it even gets tricky to have like personality requirements because mm -hmm. we actually don't all usually know like what will make us happy until we, especially if we haven't encountered it before. Um, so if you, I do think it's dangerous to like keep looking for something like the other people you've dated who obviously like didn't work out. So I think I would have a mix of like recognizing what I'm drawn to over and over and over. Um, but also like being honest about like the pitfalls that came with that personality I was drawn to, at least be honest about it. And then also I would definitely throw in wild cards. People that I was like, I would not normally say yes to this person. I, I'm like on the fence and I would throw in a wild card literally just to be like, I'm, I'm assuming that I actually don't know mm. that I don't know like it it helped me even if you met them and then you were like yeah this isn't what I want for xyz it kind of like helps you feel more confident about your choice just to know you are trying other dynamics um but I also really firmly pretty firmly believe that my impressions on the app were usually correct yeah I I feel like everyone likes to talk about um, your intuition. And I, I felt like after being on the apps long enough, like, and I'm good at reading people, I felt like my assumptions were usually correct. And that doesn't mean like, I gotta get my thoughts together. I started well, doing something. I think it's, it's, it's one thing to like, I, I would make a guess about a person before going on a date with them before going on a first date and be like, I think 
based on the superficial information I've collected, I think they're going to be this way. And I'm open to be being proven wrong, but like, this is my guess. And like, let's see if that's correct so that you are still giving them a chance, but it, it was always that my guess was correct. And so doing that as an exercise helped me build a lot of confidence, like in my read of people, in my intuition, but you have to go into it, like really open to being corrected and open to being proven wrong. But that mm -hmm. will like show you if your intuition, if your reads on people are good or not, which I don't know. If yeah. That answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I hear what you're saying. I, I think I had a similar experience, but very specifically where I got my assumptions about people right on the apps was when I would chat with them. So mm. not necessarily based yeah. on their profile, but mm -hmm. based on now we've matched and now we're chatting. That is where I would always look back on it after actually meeting up with them, maybe even dating them for a month or something and be like, oh, literally the fact that this guy was this way, the fact that he was like dodgy or it's took fair. a long time to actually set up the date or whatever, or just like said the right things, but then didn't actually follow through or whatever it's the personality trait was that showed up as I got to know him more. It was all in those first interactions. Dude, I have a theory that everything you need to know about a person when you're, when you're on the apps, I have a theory, everything you need to know is in the first message they send to you. I mm. think it's all there. The level of effort, the level of attention, like the level of kindness, the level of interestingness, like the response time. I think it is all there in the first message. Go, I mean, obviously there's probably fucking exceptions, but also maybe not. Go back into your, go back into your other like past dating history chats and look at the first message and tell me if I'm right. Um, it has always been correct. Yeah. I think the information is there, which is all again, just to say like, believe the information you're receiving yeah. you actually yeah. do know and it's usually that I found I was talking myself out of the thing I already knew um so that's why it was helpful like for me to really like I took notes I would I would usually be a voice memo like before going on a first date after the first date before second date after the second date I'd be like this is what I expected and then this is what actually happened. This is what I expected. This is what actually happened. This is how it made me feel. And that way of tracking it was super important for me because then I couldn't, like I had it, I had a record. I couldn't convince myself mm. that on date number two, they didn't make me feel super fucking weird. I couldn't convince myself, be, like I, you couldn't like whitewash it. Yeah. Um, I, took it a, I took a lot of notes, dog. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. I never did that, but I really like the idea of it because I do think I ended up lying to myself you know like I knew what I felt after a first date or something yeah. and I'd kind of keep going down that path anyway and kind of push it down and be like well maybe that wasn't actually that weird or maybe I'm like not giving no. them enough of the benefit of the doubt or maybe this and then sure enough like it reveals itself in time and I knew it from the first moment you know yeah and that's what's that's what's hard when you're trying to it's like that's that's the mm -hmm. other part of the advice you get is people being like you're too picky you're not giving them the benefit of the doubt you're being too judgmental so it's like for me it was learning to like not ignore my judgments or my impressions but just be like okay but that's I am assuming that's a fact I don't know it's a fact that's my impression and I'm gonna like really intentionally note that and then also yes. like see what's actually true you just have to do it like you have to like stay super aware which is why I literally had to take notes and maybe you don't have to do this and every time I talk about how I date I sound fucking crazy <laughs> but like I I learned from myself dating that I couldn't be trusted with how I would like write stories about people how I would um whitewash stuff how I would talk myself out of what I knew so if you relate yeah. to that Go ahead. Be fucking crazy. I don't care. Yeah. I used to, I used to be really quick to be like, first date was lame, not going out with this person again. Bye. Never mm. talking to you again, whatever. And at some point I realized I've been on so many first dates, not a lot of second dates. Mm. And I would think back on those first dates and be like, I mean, that guy was actually maybe he was nice. Maybe I should have given him more of a chance. And like, that probably wasn't true. Like they're not my person. I'm not with them now, but I did take from that something that I do think has value and helped me a lot, which was, which was just like, go on a second date. Mm. I think a lot of the time 
the first date has so much pressure. People are really weird. Some people oh are God. really awkward. Dude, like- no one's, it's such a bizarre situation. No one is being themselves on a first date. Right. I think my, my boyfriend has said, he was like, first dates are basically just to make sure like, are you minimally attracted to someone and can they yes. hold a conversation? Yeah, that's pretty much it. That that, that was a huge you, shift yeah. for me. And I even have told my boyfriend, and this is something we've talked about, like, if I met him six months before I did, I probably wouldn't have gone on a second date with him. Our first date was like <clears throat> good, but it wasn't amazing. I wasn't like, there's How a huge could it be? spark. It's a stranger. And I, yeah. I know, but then you ha- I have also been on like one or two first dates where I was like, wow. Where's Mark? Okay. Spark. Did you did you date them long term? The spark is such the spark. The no. spark immediately is like almost it's so fun, obviously, but I also feel like it correlates in no way to whether that's a good person to date or not. Exactly. Exactly. Could and be that happened Could be. a couple Could of times. Be. Happened a couple of times. And I was like, oh wow, like this is so exciting. I, I feel like our conversation is just flowing, like laugh, 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 like story, 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 like <laughs> attraction, 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 whatever. And I would date these people for a short period of time and it would like totally crash and burn because the spark was just like, they're charismatic. I'm charismatic. We get to a table and we can talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. And it just like, there was actually no substance there once I spent a little bit more time or they weren't really in it for the same thing as me or whatever the situation turned out to be. And with my now boyfriend, I enjoyed our first date. I thought he was a really nice guy. I thought that we like had some things in common that were interesting to talk about. We had a couple of laughs. I thought he was cute. Like there was enough, but at the same time, like a previous version of me would have been like, there was no spark really. Like there was, I don't know if that's like going to be it. And I probably wouldn't have gone on a second date, but I was very adamant at this point in my dating life of like, I'm just going to, these are things I'm noting, like you mentioned yeah. earlier. Like I'm gonna take yeah. note, but I'll I'll hang out with him again and I'll see if yeah. that like persists or if there's an evolution here. And sure enough, on date two, there was an evolution. And we even like we always would say that we were breaking the fourth wall and we would like talk about our date. Like so on the second date, we talked about That's our first a, date. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay. That's cute. <laughs> and... Breaking the fourth wall you play a little dork. I I know, which is like a very me thing to do for people who don't know what that means. It's like Jim Halpert on the office looking at the camera. It's like acknowledging that there's an audience, acknowledging that like, like kind of stepping outside of yourself and looking at the situation. So we would break the fourth wall and, and be like, yeah, so on the first date, like, what was uh, like, I feel like I did all the talking. I'm pretty sure I said that to him on the second date. I was like, I was really, I th- actually, I think he said it. He was like, you really like ran the show on our first date. Like that was my bad. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. They, even, even that is an endearing statement. It's an though. endearing thing. I was like, oh, a fucking sense of humor, self-awareness, like confidence yeah. to just bring that up. All of yeah. those things I'm attracted to. And uh, I was like, yeah, I kind of did. Like, what was up with that? And he was like, what? I- <laughs> <laughs> and he was like I was really nervous I was really I'm like awkward when I first meet someone like it takes me a while to yeah, open man. up and who is you know I'm really glad that, that I situation. gave that chance yeah I love that I mean, for me I think it's helped a lot to think about um I think we treat like dating or like finding your person as like this special different kind of human relationship which I don't think is super helpful like sometimes it's helped me a lot to think about my friends, like some of mm. my friends, I, some of my close friends I met in his instant chemistry, some of them, like I totally got them wrong when I first met them and it built slowly over time or it built with context or it built with shared experience and they're just as close friends. Yeah. Um, so I think we have all these like special rules about like how it's supposed to be when you meet the person and we don't apply those kinds of rules to any other kinds of relationships. Like we all have a best friend. Maybe if you, if you ask a hundred people, like what their dynamic is like with their best friend, they would all look different. And so yeah. I think it's silly to be like, it should feel like this with your person or whatever. Like they all look different. Um, and I, I like what you said about just being like, yeah, noting, maybe you go on the second date and you're like, okay, I'm wondering if there's enough chemistry. There might not be, I think by the second or third date, then, you know, yeah. um, Justin and I, first date we 
it was like good date, like good first date. You're cute, you're a cute boy. And <laughs> like we're then we both can talk. Cool. Right. And um, you know, whatever. Get me out of here. I can't talk to any, I can't talk to a stranger longer than 90 minutes. I think he asked to get a second drink and I was like, I cannot. But I really <laughs> liked him and I wanted to I like see that. him again. <laughs> I cannot. And um then we went on our second date and it was his idea. We went to see the moth, which is like a storytelling. I love the moth. Yeah, he so cool. Up, this fucking bitch brought up the moth. I was like, girl, I love the moth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we went and it was like pretty bad. It, it was not good. The stories, it was like a some finalist competition for the moth, the storytelling competition. And it was like not good. And we were both like, what is happening? And then we completely bonded over shitting on this like mm-hmm. terrible production together. And it was like a huge, huge it was like a huge change of being like, oh, this is like a special thing I can do. Like, I know how to like talk shit with you. I know how to make jokes with you now. I can see like you, how you look at the world a little bit. Um, it was like so much more chemistry when, whereas the first date was just like, oh, we both know how to go on a date. Um, right. Yeah. I felt like right. it was really helpful to, to go and have something to comment on instead of just like staring each other down. But especially um, as a second date, because it's like, okay, you have enough baseline, you have enough yes. foundation, you've ripped the bandaid of like the first awkward meeting. And so the second time you can like banter about the shitty show that you're watching, you can break the fourth wall and be like, yo, what yeah. was up with you last time? Like, I love that. You, you have a little more foundation, foundation to go off of to be yourself a little more and yeah. like to joke and you know, their pacing, you know, the way they speak, you know, the way that they yeah. like. Okay, speaking of pacing, yeah. Can I can I say a tip that I did not use with my current boyfriend, but actually a different date I went on gave me this advice and I was like, "Oh, I think that's good." He talked about how this some guy went on, I don't know, he he had some we didn't work out. I think he was gay, but not not cuz he didn't like me. I remember I just, this guy. I've just kissed a lot of gay people. It's not cuz he <laughs> listen, listen, lots of straight people also don't like me. I'm not saying <laughs> I'm I'm not saying that because um, it didn't work out. He's gay. I'm just saying it actually, Elizabeth ended up joining me at the end of the state. I don't know why I was like, I was like drunk and high and we were having a great time. And Elizabeth was nearby my sister and she came and joined the date and she, the, which was pretty weird on a first date. I've done that with sister. a friend's first date before. <laughs> yeah. <she's>, my <laughs> sister came to the end of this first date and she sat, I think between us and during the date sitting next to us, she asked me if he was gay. So I'm saying it's not just me. Like, and it wasn't any, anyhow, there was also something weird going on with his, like the skin behind his ears. It was oh kind God. of, a deal. it was a deal breaker. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do it, but very nice guy. One of the nicest people I've ever met. And he told me that, um, he likes to meet people, even if he has an idea of like where he wants to meet up for a drink, he likes to meet at like an intersection or on the street. And cause you get to see like how somebody walks around, how they like navigate picking a place together, or, you know, you could have that figured out, but like, you get to see somebody walk someone's gate, um, and how they carry themselves. Like those are, mm. uh, pretty superficial things, but they're also a huge part of attraction. Like I need to see your body in a vertical manner and mm-hmm. I need to watch how you walk. I need to see what you do with your shoulders. And also just like the nature of walking, around to like solve a problem lightly for a moment together you do get like vastly so much more information about a person it just walking like three blocks yeah. um and I was like oh I think that's yeah I think that's actually a great tip don't I requirement. like that a lot I, I so. like that a lot I thought where you were going with that because <clears throat> the key word at the beginning was pacing yeah um was about kind of like <laughs> pacing of a conversation on a date especially a first date because oh. something that I am definitely bad at have never done successfully I don't even think I've tried to do it I think I heard this advice after I was already with my boyfriend so I was like oh well okay I'll tell somebody else about this but um (laughs) there's something to like allowing moments of silence and moments of pause and like lingering taking your time eye contact where like you're not saying anything like allowing a little breathing room where they have an opportunity to say something extra I suffocate a first date conversation so I can't even fully blame my boyfriend for the fact that like I ran that first date because I know myself and I'm like I don't want dead air I'm a I'm a 
quote unquote comedian. I'm like, we got to keep it moving. I can't have any dead time. I want to, I want laugh, it's laugh. Uncomfortable. Joke, joke. It's uncomfortable for everyone. Yeah. And, but there's something in those silent moments and those pauses and those lingers and those looks that is, that builds attraction and. Or, um, or tells you that they have nothing to fucking say. Yes. It's, that it's too. really important. Like if I, yeah, I can hold a date on my own. I don't fucking need you here for this date. Like, but that's really not any information. In the meantime, then I'm not letting you ask about me. And also I'm not getting to like decide if I like you that much. Cause I'm just busy, like entertaining the date. And I feel like Yes. Not that I would talk that much on dates, but um, if I kept filling the air and I kept asking follow up questions or I kept like I was dem- it was demonstrating interest that I maybe didn't have. Mm. And then I felt like it would get me in positions where it it represented my interest. Um, It misrepresented my interest where I was like, no, I just actually didn't want to feel awkward. But like, yes, that yes, sucked felt that way constantly I totally agree like you're you're giving them false hope almost of like your investment and your interest in them by being that person that like is is entertaining and charismatic and has all the questions and then also I would leave those dates and be like hmm they didn't really ask me anything which is a good question to ask yourself and a good test but at the same time did I allow any space for them to ask me anything like I don't Mm. know if that was always their fault Mm. um I think if it persists, then like, yeah, you want somebody who's interested in you. Or if you're not a person who like aligns with what I'm describing, then definitely like if they're showing interest in asking good questions is such an important um, thing to check in about. But I I just feel like I would suffocate a date where I don't even know if it was because they didn't want to know about me. I think I just didn't let them. I would literally, I think I would like think about percentages at the end of a date <laughs> like how much did they talk how much did I in talk? your notes and I, I, yeah and I I just yeah just casually and I had the experience I don't know what to say about this but I had the experience that most of the time the guy would not shut the fuck I mean he mm. like wouldn't ask me anything about myself he wouldn't ask me anything about myself and here I am being interesting as all get out and you don't even know so right. I don't know I had that ex- it was really um it was interesting when there's like I feel like there's definitely this stereotype like that the women are the chatters like I have a podcast I can't chat no one would let me I don't know it was yeah it was different and and I found it it was so off-putting yeah people you know I've had that experience too so off-putting like obviously we both have to make an effort here right Um, yeah um okay so we were talking a little bit before about like the shoulds and how dangerous the shoulds are and we got a lot of questions and I'm not surprised that we did but we got a lot of questions that were framed as like, what are the normal amounts of time? Like, what's normal amount of communication between dates? What's a normal amount of time mm. to spend texting or to wait between texts? What's the normal amount of times to hang out in the week? When is, a, when is the right time to have sex? When is the right time to introduce them to your friends? When is the right time to call it exclusive or add labels? Like so all funny. of those types of questions. And I can't, you know, as much as like, I can sit here right now and say that you're asking the wrong questions. Um, I also know that I've I've been that person asking those questions myself. So I understand where it's coming from. What's your take on that stuff? Like, I, I feel like there's no shoulds and there's no normal amount of time. And it's just yeah. kind of like what feels right for you. But at the same time, if you're in a situation when you're asking where you're, you can't get those types of questions out of your head, then like, maybe that's an indicator that it's, probably it's not, not right. right. For you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's like one of the best pieces of advice. I think my friend Sheila gave it to me. It was actually after a relationship, a relationship where I was always in my head trying to figure out like, is this behavior normal? Is it normal for him to do this? Is it should it is this something I should get on board with? And she, I was driving myself crazy with that question like for years, and eventually Sheila was just like, it it honestly doesn't really matter if it's normal. It's just like, does it work for you? Yeah, and it changed my life. And um, I do think that applies to all the rest of it. I would say when you were naming all those things, people get hung up on, I was thinking about how I've handled them and I've done them all a crazy way. I've done all of them (laughs) a crazy way. Like I refuse, I basically refuse to text people. I don't, I don't do the chit chat before a date, like book a date. I don't want to talk to you. I will say, I said to Justin, I said, I'm not, I don't want to text until I've met you. Okay. Goodbye. And um, lots of people like to do the chit chat. 
Um, I fucking brought my sister on a first date. I think I made Justin meet my entire family when we had only ever like kissed. Um, uh, the, when should you have sex? I just stopped doing it. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying I have very extreme reactions to things and it worked for me, but, um, it's not what's normal. It's just what works for you. And I, yeah, I think you're right. If you're in your head about it, it's probably not working for you or there's like, or it's something you need to like communicate about or, um, or bring up with someone, or you need to communicate that that matters to you, that you want to text more, or you want to see them more. And I think before which, you know, everyone likes to talk about communication, but for me, the experience was that until I was, it, it felt impossible to say needs. It felt impossible to ask for those things. It felt so awkward, so weird until I was with somebody who made it feel really easy. Um, and that was like a huge shift that I feel like I only really got to notice since meeting someone who just like made it easier to be like, oh, I want to talk more or less or see you more or less or define this more or less like the wrong people will make it feel really hard to do those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's especially true for me when it comes to like calling something exclusive or calling something boyfriend and girlfriend. Like I've been with people before I've been, you know, dating (laughs) someone for a couple of months who I was like thinking all the time, I wonder if he's seeing anyone else should I bring up being exclusive? Even when I did bring it up, I still don't think we were like on the same page after we had that conversation. Like, I don't think I was explicit about what that meant to me. And I don't think he was explicit about what it meant to him. And I was constantly worried about like, what are we and are we on the same page about it? Fast forward to now with my boyfriend, when we got together, I was not thinking about those things at all. We we like yeah. first uttered like girlfriend and boyfriend like six months into dating each other and he I found out in retrospect that he thought that that had been the case for like the last four months like he just assumed oh yeah we've been spending all the time together I'm only seeing you we had discussed that we were only seeing each other and we were exclusive um, but you weren't you weren't wondering about it you weren't like caught up in anxiety wondering about it because he just made you feel secure without exactly like, I feel like when you're clinging for the label it's because something doesn't feel something's secure. off probably not not always but yeah like you uh, yeah and I think the other thing that sometimes adds to it is like friends asking dude and- I stopped I specifically stopped talking to people about mm-hmm. dating I really did because I would try to convey things that I fucking knew in my experience from being in a room with someone. People would talk me out of it. Wow. People talking yeah, to I wrong mean, people would talk me out of it. No, I stopped. It's the same. About- <laughs> I really dealt with that a lot of like, oh, like, are you, what are you guys? Have you had that conversation yet? And honestly, mm. I think that people are one, a lot of times projecting two, a lot of times just trying to create conversation and they don't really know what to ask. And that's like, a thing that yeah. is relevant to dating so they ask it like I don't actually think anyone cares or should care what <laughs> your label is with your person that you're seeing but so it's funny. just a thing that comes up and then you feel this pressure of like should I be worried about that should I have had that conversation already what's the normal amount of time and that can sometimes be where these questions are coming from um, but in my experience I agree with you like being with somebody who I felt secure with, I honestly wasn't worried about it. Whereas I've been worried about those things before because I didn't feel yeah. that sense of security and I didn't feel like I was on the same page. Um, it's very personal. So like any pressure that you're receiving from outside parties is like the way they might do it, but doesn't necessarily have to be the way that you would do it. But if you feel really stressed about it, then pay attention to that too. I think that's yeah. like the takeaway. I will say that in addition, just on the same note of saying the things that are hard to say, even when I, just because things are hard to say and someone maybe makes them feel hard to say, like either stop dating that person or if you're dating them and it feels really difficult, like I think it it just, it's difficult to like, yeah, set your boundaries, say what you want. Like it's a vulnerable thing because you don't know if they're going to meet you there. Um, Whether it felt easy or difficult, like with lots of different people, I made a really like intention, intentional work of saying the things and I kind of will do it like a robot or like a maniac because I'm mechanically forcing myself Mm. to say what I want it doesn't feel natural it doesn't feel safe but I I thought of it a lot as like getting my reps in was something I thought of a lot in dating was like even if this isn't the right person 
if this is the person I'm seeing right now and I know like I want to get my reps in of like say having difficult conversations or like putting myself out there or even getting my reps in with getting rejected like that's an important thing and the more you do it the more you get used to it the more you know it won't kill you so that was something I thought a lot about in dating like and I think it helped change my perspective a lot on even things that end up being maybe a disappointing experience or a negative experience which like I think somebody wrote in one listener wrote in um it sucks until it doesn't which I completely agree Mm. with like yeah like if they were all great you probably would have stayed there but like it sucks until it doesn't and in the meantime something that kept me going was thinking about like making it constructive what are the things you're practicing practicing asking for like practicing the boundaries whatever it's an overused word but it's important um so I really thought of it as like reps and I was getting better at it and um getting better at ending the wrong relationships sooner I think is also why you want to like set the boundaries and say what you want because you want to hear if that other person is weirded out by you saying it you want to hear if they're not interested Mm -hmm. and then you get in that fucking relationship and move on Mm -hmm. yeah no notes oh I have a personal take this jumps back a little bit which I know people asked about people did ask how long to talk in person Lots of different opinions on this. I'm going to say, I kind of think my opinion is correct, which is that people's texting personality can be very different from their in-person text personality. Correct. I've fucking fallen in love with a texting personality before, met in person two weeks later, and then been like, whoop, don't even want to look at you. Don't, we have no chemistry in person. What a waste of two weeks. So that's why I like to just like get to the date. And then if you know you want to text out with them, cool. But um, I think I have other friends who like, they like to do a call. They like to do a FaceTime before. So maybe you do a lot of that before going on a date. But I think there's a, I think it is a huge fucking waste of time to text yeah. for dating. I'm the same way as you. I mean, I, I can understand why somebody might want to do a FaceTime a if you're like a little bit nervous about meeting oh, like, I- somebody random from the internet. Yeah. Like I can understand that, but just texting how was your day or getting to know them Dude, and like asking deep questions no oh my gosh uh, they're I've, just I've words spent... they're just words they don't mean I've... anything right I've spent all day texting people and all week texting people before meeting them and then meeting them and being like oh nah, as right. soon as they've walked into the room yeah, being like there's nothing it. here <laughs> yeah there's fucking nothing here that's why like I actually never did it I think I did one FaceTime date in COVID or something but I have some friends who they have to, they will only do like, you got to do a 10 minute FaceTime call before we go on a first date. And I do think like, and I haven't done it, but in theory, I think it's great because if someone's weirded out by that, that's a good filter. They're not very yeah. serious. It's a fine thing to ask for. Like, yes, it's uncomfortable, but anyone can do 10 minutes. You're only inconvenienced by that if you're really just looking for a hookup and you're like, oh, it's too much effort. Yep. So great filter. Great. Don't FaceTime me. Get the fuck out. And then also you learn so much in five, like talking to somebody for five minutes, you know, if you want to talk to them again. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, not exactly the same topic, but tangential, like there was a question about how much to hang out in a week. And somebody also wrote something in Mm. that was like, how do you stay detached from the outcome, but still remain invested and intentional? Who the and... fuck is getting detached from the outcome? The fuck? Who's who's, who's, <laughs> pro- who's promising you that you can do that? What do you mean? Oh you're yeah, gonna, there's definitely no if promise. Get, if you get rejected, it's gonna suck. It's gonna suck. And there's no avoiding that. Like disappointment and rejection is gonna suck. What? That's true. Who told, who told you That's you can true. detach from the outcome? But I also think, okay, I agree with you in terms of rejection. But I guess it depends on where you're at with a person if you've Mm. like been seeing one person and been on a few dates and that's what you're focused on then like there's you're not detached and rejection is gonna suck and whatever but I also think there's different schools of thought on this but I was always really bad at dating a lot of people at once I tried to kind of like go on multiple dates with different people at the same time and it just like never worked for me but the one thing that I do think does help and did help me was like maintain your life outside of dating this person if you have plan if you're trying to figure out when to go on a date with this person and scheduling is tricky don't like cancel your plans with your friends to make time for the date with them like remain true to yourself remain true to the commitments you have outside of this remain active in the other ways that you are in your life like 
I think that's a thing that helped me remain detached, healthily detached. I, I was still invested and interested in wanting it to work out with people that I was seeing, but I have also like done the opposite and been way too obsessed, way too early, bending over backwards to make plans work out with a person, um, mm. kind of like abandoning myself and abandoning my friendships and abandoning my gym schedule or my like hobbies or whatever because I just wanted to like you know pursue that and and make that my focus and it it sets you up for an even more painful rejection rejection is going to suck either way but if that's the way that you're behaving and you're treating um early dates you know like first few like uh, yeah. if, it, if it's a new boyfriend a new partner like something that's serious it's different I I agree with your thing that you've talked about a lot of like it's it's okay to be obsessed for a time and it's okay to be like really invested and obsessed with someone but when it's but early, early and you're days. not there yet like maintain it your did life help me <laughs> it did help me also um also I want to say that like everything we're saying I'm sure other people have, like different approaches to different stuff that work for yeah. you this is just a work for me but it did help me actually I wouldn't usually be like really dating a lot of people at once but I would sometimes go on like multiple first dates in a week or I would I would usually have I would usually cap it off at having like three um three connections on like the dating app I was using once I like had like three connections and I was pretty intentional about who I connected with uh, it wasn't just like three fucking randos it was three people that had passed through a lot of my filters I would cap it at three and I would usually pause my dating profile because if I got more and more mm. connections, I was more and more overwhelmed. I don't want 10 conversations going. Then I'm not really investing in any of them. I'm probably exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. I don't want to be texting. I'm not like putting in good effort with any of them, whatever. So I would cap it at three, but having three as opposed to one did help me to stay more in touch with what is the truth, which is that like, there are many people you can connect with. Yeah. It's not all writing on the state. Like I get very extreme and very intense about a lot of stuff. So to me, it was helpful even to be like, okay, I matched with three people. Who knows how it's going to go with any of them. And then like, if I went on a date with one and it was amazing, I would stop talking to the others. I'm not like keeping them there just to have something on the back burner. It, it really was just for like early, early dating um, to help me not get over invested before I know somebody yeah. um that that did help me it, it wasn't to fuck with someone it wasn't to like fool myself it just it did help me to stay in touch with the fact that like there are lots of people to talk to I obviously don't agree with the like there's one person for everyone it's like I, I think again bringing back to friends I think about like all my best friends I could have a different loving long-term relationship with so many different of my best friends and all of those relationships would look different. I met them all at different points in life. They all bring something else out. There's just like lots of ways to have deep connection. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's any different with a, with a partner. So that I think, you know, I didn't extensively date multiple people at a time, but it, it did help me not to over index on something, not, not to put all the pressure on it and need it to be everything before you'd even met them. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's what I was trying to get at. I think that's well said. This bug. Okay. The last few things I wanted to touch on, there are a couple of recurring themes that came up in what listeners wrote in. Okay. One of them I'm considering like fuck boy, fuck girl, fuck thems. That's my new word is like they, them, fuck, fuck them, fuck them. Yeah. Fuck um, specifically ghosting was a big question. How to let someone down as opposed to ghosting them. And then on the reverse, how to react when you get ghosted i don't get it it's sending a fucking text like don't be a coward right. can you can you type a message don't be a coward i really don't get it like I, you don't get the people saying how do i how do i write that message fucking write it dog yeah google it <laughs> google an answer google an answer I know. you can copy they paste. are everywhere i'll tell you okay i'll tell you what i would do i would write something very complimentary you lay around the compliment i had a really great time blah 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 it's not what i'm looking for like it's not what I'm looking for. You don't owe them more details. Wish y'all the best. Like it, mm -hmm. I had a really nice time. It is so, I it is so simple. Yeah. I, I think people genuinely... build it up so much Dude, in their heads. 
you don't have to lie. You don't have to like the feck, the feck. I, I mean, I understand. I also understand the anxiety around it, especially like as a, as a, I, I, I felt plenty of times when I was younger, the consequences of rejecting someone meant that they could lash out. It happened a lot. So yeah, it did make me afraid of doing it. I find that that happens a lot less since we're a bit older yeah. Um, people realize that's not acceptable behavior, but like it does still happen. Yeah. Um, you know, send them a nice text and immediately block their numbers. You don't have to hear yeah. them, whatever. I, I, I guess it doesn't, it's not going to tank your life to ghost people, but like, why don't you practice saying hard things? Like even that is getting your reps in practice, mm -hmm. like treating people with respect and, you know, sleeping well at night and saying hard things that are honest. That is part of dating. You're still like doing a good job dating them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, I personally never really had a hard time with this. Like I think sending the text of like, hey, it was great to meet you, but I don't feel a romantic connection here. Like, wish you the best of luck is so easy to do. Yeah. It just rolls Every, off the tongue. Everybody um, knows. Like, that's what happens with dating. That's what dating is. Yeah, you're okay. not. You're Every single first date that you go on is obviously not going to end up being the person that you have a long-term relationship with. Um, that's just part of the deal of going on first dates and doing the whole song and dance. I think sometimes I've received annoying responses most of the time just to like yeah people's totally nerves. annoying ones 90 totally percent of the time it's like hey thanks for letting me know best of luck cool totally respectful and and usually mutual like usually it's like we both yeah. probably felt that that wasn't the vibe but Actually, occasionally if they, respond, if they respond to something terrible it's like thank you for confirming for like, confirming that i don't want this bless and you, guess bless what you, bitch don't respond to the terrible thing either. No fucking like, shit. Oh my God. Sometimes people that? get themselves trapped in this cycle of like, yeah. I have to teach them how to behave. I have no. to like correct no. them when they are rude. This person send doesn't fucking up. matter. Send a, send a thumbs yeah. up, bro. No. Yeah. That's the reason you said no in the first place. And I think Ugh. the same thing goes for if you get ghosted. If you get ghosted. Don't go asking for That answers. sucks. Don't go that person for... sucks. Why would you let them let them go? They walked out of your life. They helped themselves out. Blessings. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you don't need to know why. The reason why is because they're immature and they couldn't send the the text to let you know what was going on. Yeah. Um, yes, I know that sometimes there's even ghosting that's like extreme after like months or something. And that's I was ghosted. Painful. I was ghosted by my boyfriend of two years. I was ghosted right. by my boyfriend of two years and I I survived it. You're gonna survive it. You're going to survive it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Crazy. I always forget that happened. I know. I was just, as I was talking, I was like, Ugh. I think Caroline said that before. <laughs> I was ghosted by somebody who I dated for a month. We saw each other almost every single day that month. And the last time I saw him was on my birthday. Yeah. And then I never heard from him again. And he insisted he, that we hang dead. out on my birthday. He's probably dead. He no, then, then he then he followed me on Instagram like three months later. Because they always That's fucking awesome. come back. Do you know how quickly I can convince myself that someone's dead? If if they, if they are slightly late with the text, I'm like, they're dead. They're, oh, yeah. Why would you not be texting me right now? There's I only do that no when reason. I care. I only do that when I care. Yeah. Like if it's my yeah, boyfriend, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, is he like in a ditch somewhere? Yeah. But I don't care about these other people. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's the ghosting topic. I feel like I, plain don't, and simple. I don't even, yeah, I don't even have the patience for the ghosting stuff. Yep. Fucking bone up. That's not very nice of me to say. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I think when you're younger and like, this is all new, like it stings so much more than. I think it's, I think it's just important to know that like, that's the process. That's not like like going on dates that suck, um, feeling deflated, uh, not connecting with people, getting rejected, getting ghosted occasionally, crying sometimes, like that's the dating process. It's, it, it's, it's not that you're doing it wrong necessarily. It's like, it's rare to find real connection with somebody who's on the same page at the same time and you've chemistry with and compatibility with. Um, yeah, it's just rare. So. And I couldn't, you know, five years ago, even when I ended, when, when my last relationship ended and I found myself single and I was embarking pretty much for the first time into the dating world and the dating app world and things like that. Um, 
I couldn't have told you mm-hmm. what I was looking for. Like, I truly didn't know. And the only way that now I can kind of tell you a little bit closer to what I'm looking for or what I what I want, what I deserve, what I expect, whatever whatever words you want to use for it is because I saw a bunch of shit that I'm not looking for. Like, that's yeah. the only way going through the process and being disappointed and then being like, OK, it's not going to be that. It's not going to be that. Really, it's not going to be that. Not that's a no. That's a no that informs. Me the the list narrows and the things that you're looking for start to become clearer and you can more quickly identify is this person going to be able to offer me uh, most of those things or are they not and like you only learn that by getting ghosted a bunch and by like hanging with fuckums a lot you know (laughs) on that note I do think it's really important to like yeah you have your list and I think we all probably have some deal breakers or some like requirements but I don't, I don't think your, I don't think your requirement should be that long. I don't think it should Mm-mm. be more than like a handful. If you're getting granular, like, I think you might have a requirement that you think is profound, but it actually might be superficial. And it might actually be something that like, what's a good example? Like, um, I don't know, thinking you need someone somebody really... who wants to live in the city forever or something yeah but like... then you meet somebody who like i i don't know yeah offers like this whole other lifestyle that you didn't even know about that you didn't know you would love and you didn't know how it would balance out everything else like i i think it's really mm-hmm. important to stay open to like what you don't know and i think most of us like don't know what will make us happy so I don't know. I, I just want, I would say I, I have a lot. Take your list, your own fucking list with a grain of salt. Totally. Um, there's this show Indian matchmaker on Netflix yeah. and she's constantly, it's very interesting and you know, whatever, go watch it and DM me about it. But um people will come to her with like these elaborate detailed lists of like every single thing that they want in a partner. And she's like, okay, I can get you 60% of this. And it's like jarring to these millennial. It's, it's kind of the concept is like these young um, people with, of an Indian background go through the like traditional Indian matchmaking process. And they're millennials in the, in this century in America, a lot of the times who are used to dating apps and who are like, I have my list of 20 things and I don't want to settle and I deserve the best and whatever. And she's like, Hey, that's not how it works. You know, that's not even what the best is. Like you can still have the best quote unquote. It's not going to be a perfect person because that relationship doesn't fucking exist. You still have fights with your friends. You still have issues or things that bother you with your friends. Like it's no different. There's going to be a, this isn't going to be a different species. It's still a person. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like it's still going to be kind of like that. It's still um, a whole person. The, the whole, whole person, person comes with stuff that's going to annoy you, stuff yeah. that you didn't expect, stuff that's going to surprise you, stuff you couldn't have named that you would like or dislike before yeah. actually encountering it. Like So silly. Yeah. And you can, I think you get attached to certain things thinking that they, especially when you've had negative experiences with someone like whatever, I'm not saying anything interesting, but I just think everyone needs to fucking throw some wild cards in there. Throw some wild yeah. cards in. Animal style. Yeah, um, I dated a DJ. I told you I dated a DJ. That was a wild card. I threw him in as a wild card, and then it turned out he was a DJ. And <laughs> um, he did break up with me for talking about it on the podcast. But I had a pretty. I got so many good stories out of that. I don't care. Right. Huge. And success. look where you are now. Like, you, you look at me now. Things. I could have any DJ I want. I could have right. any <laughs> DJ on earth. <laughs> as long as they don't listen to this podcast or read any of our reviews or. <laughs> Would- what Look I'm at saying, our DMs where everything that people DM us are like DJ reels on Instagram. Yeah. Um, okay, the last big theme <laughs> that came up a, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was on my requirement list. Must be a DJ. Yeah, accurate dating profile like we talked Whoa. about last week. You're, after the statement about like your best and worst quality, it's then what am I looking for? DJ. <laughs> DJ. Um, okay, the last big theme that came up was around exes and actually a couple people specifically mentioned something that you've talked about Caroline around Mm. like your ex who was your comedy partner Mm. and they were like how do I stop comparing everyone that I meet to my ex and in parentheses my comedy partner literally like three different people asked that um what that's very specifically like hearkening to something you've talked about so 
I wonder if you relate and had that struggle and like if you have any advice around it. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, first of all, if somebody's like your comedy partner, you're probably talking about chemistry. Like that's a personality fit, but a personality yeah. fit is not compatibility. So I don't know why you broke up with your ex, but I can speak about my own experience, like amazing personality fit. Um, but I could look like there's a reason we broke up. It wasn't compatible long-term. I was so sad all the fucking time, even though I think he has a great personality. Um, whether you broke up with them or they broke up with you, like there's a reason you broke up. There's a reason you broke up, I assume. Um, and so just having a personality fit does not a relationship make. It certainly made me fucking miserable and there was a great personality fit. So that that's just like, oh, I heard it said the other way, like the stages... I think I was listening like I saw like a Jay Shetty podcast mm. reel or something and listen to Jay Shetty um and he was talking about like the phases I don't know he was naming it as being like you know there's chemistry and then there's compatibility and then there was a third thing beyond that oh character it's mm. chemistry chemistry is like first you go on a date you, you're trying to figure out if you have chemistry that can be immediate that can like take a few dates to figure out but like it's like it's hard to find it is hard to find but it's actually not everything. And then you figure out if you have compatibility, like do your lifestyles match up? Do, do you want to spend days the same way? Um, like, do you care about a family or not or whatever? Um, the logistics, I feel like, and then character is basically what will carry you through the rest of the way when stuff gets really hard, when you're both facing massive disappointments, whatever, but like personality fit, I'm not going to say it's easy to find it, but like, it also doesn't keep you warm at night. Like I know how miserable mm. I was. And I feel like it was like, uh, like, I still think he has a great personality. Don't want to date him. Um, and, and I do think it's a pitfall to, if you like to catch yourself looking to like, just find another personality like your ex. Um, I like specifically didn't want to date anyone funny. I was like, funny is yeah. such a red flag to me. Fuck you guys. Um, but what I... I mean, I did, I, I ended up finding somebody funny anyway, Justin's very funny. It was like, that was one of the standout things on our first date is that he made me laugh. And that was super rare. Um, but there's all these other things that come with it. So the personality fit, I don't know. Why'd you guys break up? I mm -hmm. guess he had a good personality. Why'd you guys break up? Personality um, is a lot of times the reason you got together. It's like, you didn't right. spend a year, two years, three years with a person and not have not get along like not have anything in your personalities that was vibey and was like connected you and like attracted you like personality is one of the earliest things I feel like you piece together about a person and that adds to the attraction and that like makes it fun and makes it whatever it is for the time that it is but um compatibility and character are the things that like hold it together I totally agree yeah. with that framework and if you're like comparing stuff to your ex you're comparing your connection to someone you knew long term mm -hmm. to people that you've met for like a few dates and one of like there's such a deeper level like it, it's the shared experience when you when you share experiences with someone when you share an environment you start to like rack up experiences with that person that's where a lot of the time um you that like you need that first before you can even have a full personality match it's it's kind of a weird sequence sometimes yeah That's why I, I kind of feel like the chemistry match right away it's not necessarily good I know lots of people who've built their connection over time um yeah so I don't know you're you're comparing someone you knew long term to someone you've been on one or a few dates with it's, it's not even an accurate comparison very good point all right. Somebody, somebody wrote in about, somebody wrote in with dating advice saying, be completely honest and transparent on dating apps. So there's no confusion slash time wasted. I think that's, that applies to like, you know, you don't have to reveal like all the worst things about you, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming this, I agree with this in terms of like, you know, uh, may, maybe it's really important for you to share that you have a kid if you know a lot of people won't be like I'm, I'm not telling you to whatever is important or that you're looking for something serious or like 
that thing that you think will be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Cool. I say, let it be a deal breaker. Don't waste your time. And mm-hmm. for me, I felt that thing was actually my job. Um, we had a lot of questions about this too, because we referenced it kind of in jest on a, on an episode, but I was really struggling with how to tell people that I was a YouTuber, which I think people listening to the podcast, it's like, it's not, it's probably hard. Like you presumably are here because you like what I do. But my experience in dating is that like people had really weird reactions to the fact that I was a YouTuber, especially in DC where like everyone just works for the government. Everyone's like an upstanding young man. Um, <laughs> I, I got, I, I felt like people often thought I wasn't serious or they thought I was stupid or they thought it was like, like I couldn't support myself or that I yet to never brain or I don't know what they thought, but it was always fucking weird. It was always a weird reaction. People would sometimes like think I was joking and like, that's pretty awkward. And you have to be like, no, this I'm, I'm telling you something real and important about myself that I actually care about and love. Like it was always, it gave me a lot of anxiety. So for me, that was my thing. It might sound silly to people to say, I felt like that was really hard to tell people, but it fucking was. And, um, and Jess was the one who encouraged me to put it on my dating profile. I I never put it on there. I never wanted people to know, but Jess told me to put it on there and I referenced it. I think I, I phrased it. Um, I was like, something you should know about me. It was the hinge pop. Something you should know about me. I quit my tech career to um, do YouTube full time or whatever. So, you know, I like edged in there. Like I'm a person who's had a real job too. I've had a job before, but yeah. also like I made this choice to do this. And then I assume anyone who saw that and was interested would immediately look up youtube.com, watch a video. I don't love it, but if they also don't love it, great. We probably won't go on a date. Like, so that was a really effective filter. And then presumably anyone I'm going on a date with, A, um, it's not a deal breaker for them. And B, I don't have to even tell them about it. Like they already know. And actually that was that was particularly helpful because I felt like once people watched the videos, they kind of appreciated it more. Um, it was usually in the abstract that they're picturing, like, what do you do? Like right. prank shows or like, I think in the abstract, they were more weirded out by it. Um, but also if they watch a video and they're, they don't like my personality or they don't like this thing that I thrive at, then you probably aren't going to value the things that I offer. So um, I think there is a lot to like, if there's something you're really having trouble saying to people and a lot of people will sh- turn it down, maybe you do want to put it on, on your profile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. I think that's true. Like <laughs> the, the example of if you have a kid brings up a, like a story. Which I think, I think a lot of people have opinion about that too. You probably also don't, some people don't want people to know they have a kid, like whatever. I just mean, you know what I mean? Oh no. I mean, I think it's a good thing to, I, I'm like in the camp of, of you. I was once talking to this guy and it was one of those situations where like, I loved him from our text conversations. I was like, oh, this is like, I love this person. We didn't even Ugh. meet. We never met because about a few days into texting with each other. And like, we were planning a date. Um, He was like, anyway, I like, can't really text much tonight. Cause I'm with my daughter. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize, like, thanks for letting me know. And I didn't know how I felt about that. And I was kind of like, okay, like, kind of wish he had maybe told me sooner, but I guess I haven't even met him yet. Like, maybe he wanted to wait, like, until he felt, like, comfortable to share that, whatever. So I said something along those lines, and he was like, oh, no, it's on my profile. I was like, no, it's not. And I went and looked, and there was, like, an app glitch where that actually didn't show up on his profile and he thought that it was on there and he was like shoot I'm so sorry like this explains so many interactions that I've had like I thought that I had been really forthcoming about this thing but like I keep talking to people who didn't even see it on my profile and didn't know if that's true if that's true that sucks for him I think everyone's lying to me but if that's true that does suck yeah oh like we exchanged screenshots on both ends and it looked to him like it was on there and it looked to me like it wasn't and he seemed like a really honest genuine guy I felt so bad um so that's like that that sucks but yeah I think 
even like I kind of learned from that too. He was like, I thought that I was being forthcoming about this thing because it is a unique thing that's hard to talk about. But if it's on the profile, like it's out in the open, like I don't have to, that was my advice to you about the YouTube thing. I was like, then it's not weird to broach the topic because they've already seen it. Like, yeah, they can go do their research. They can reflect on whether they're ready to date someone who has a kid. Like you're dating 22 year olds. Like, no, they, yeah, maybe they're not ready to date someone who has a kid. Like there's a million valid reasons to not be the right match or um, to not want to date a YouTuber, but I don't want to go on dates with people that have a problem with me being a YouTuber. It's not, it's going to be a big waste of time. Yeah. Cool. Any other one last advice tidbit from the the crowd? Totally. Um, Yeah, I think one of the best things I've heard, somebody wrote in with this advice, this idea that like, if you're confused, if mm. you're confused about how they feel about you, if you're not sure how they feel about you, they don't feel enough about you. They don't. Um, I do. I actually do think it's pretty simple um, that like when they really like you now, granted, there's still, you know, Justin was obviously super like just like in, in doing it into it like there was no confusion about his effort and interest I I still spired on plenty of other things but it was like it was just clear this person is like working on fucking dating me mm-hmm. and um that being said I dated plenty of people before who like they definitely were into me they spent a lot of time with me they um definitely enjoyed my personality like they liked plenty plenty but it still left me feeling kind of unsure about their feelings and that's it's that middle ground uh you know obviously it's easy when someone's just treating you like trash when somebody's just blowing you off like that's not the thing we're confused about we're confused about the ones who also definitely like like a sum Mm -hmm. but we're not quite sure how much I think if you're confused it's probably not enough yeah yeah I think that's true I think it's hard for people who experience dating anxiety to like decipher me me. yeah yeah I mean I definitely do I have I don't know I have anxiety in general and a place that it really shows up is dating and romantic relationships and that was always a hard thing for me to under to like decipher like am I confused because they're not doing enough and like what this piece of advice is actually the truth or am I confused because I'm spiraling in my head and I'm anxious and I'm reading into everything and um, like what's the how do I figure that out and I don't have a great answer other than like I think it's just for me it went back to like the noting and the like okay yeah I'm gonna note these things I'm gonna take some time to see if it persists, see if it's a pattern, see if it improves because maybe as they get to know me more and invest more time, like their investment and their effort will grow. Like I don't need, I don't think somebody should be all in from the beginning. So it's kind of like over time, what's that looking like? And if it continues to confuse you at a certain point where you feel sure about how you feel about them, but you don't feel sure about it being reciprocated, um, like I think there comes a tipping point and it, that's probably different for everyone, but mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. It, it I agree it with this tricky. advice and also it's very hard to like implement. It's hard when you're anxious. The thing, fucking all of this has been hard for me. I'm not, you know, and when I'm referencing, referencing my current relationship, it's not because I think I fucking figured it all out, like <laughs> smiling every day. But one thing that has helped me um in discerning if it's my own anxiety or not was there were a lot of moments where um I was super anxious and I I was trying to figure out is it their behavior or is it my own issue and I realized like I was like okay well if I'm going to talk to them about this if I had a conversation about this like what would I want them to do differently Mm. and with some guys it would be like I want them to like see me more I want them to be nicer to me I want them to talk to me this way I want them to take me on a date this way and then with Justin it was like I don't want him to change anything I don't want him to do anything differently I don't want him to text me or like I don't I, I don't want anything to be different 
Mm-hmm. And, and so, okay. Then like his behavior is clear. What's left is my anxiety. Um, so if you yeah. can't think of, I think that that did kind of help me is like, if you can't think that was, it didn't make the anxiety go away, but it kept me, it allowed me to like stay in it and continue to give it a chance because I at least couldn't think of like what I would say to him, like what yeah. change would I ask for? So that was something that kind of helped me. And then eventually it's become a lot easier to like relax. Right. But I don't know yeah. I, re- I think that's really good advice. I remember you telling me that. Um, and that is so illuminating if you can like say it that way and phrase it, like frame it that way to yourself. Um, a thing that I said in our breakup episode that I think is relevant here is like, remind yourself of the facts. That's something that always really grounds oh. me is like, what has actually happened? And then what is happening in my head? Like what's the narrative and how I'm spinning Dude, it and how my emotions funny. and anxiety are, are spinning it. So like if this person that you're dating has on paper done the things that you want and treated you and made you feel in a good way, like kind of what you're saying, like I, you didn't want him to do anything differently. Um, If you can kind of like write those things out and like parse through them and be like, okay, actually this is all good. This is all good. And then the thing that's left is like, is your anxiety and the story you're telling yourself in your head, then that's a way to be clearer about like, okay, then that's what this is. And I have to I have to figure out where that's coming from and that might take you longer and it might actually have nothing to do with the person and have a lot to do with, you know, the the things that you're bringing to the relationship and the things that you're insecure about from previous experiences or what have you. Um, so yeah, like breaking it down to like what's actually happening versus like, yeah, what am I convinced? Was my anxiety convincing me is happening? Still really hard. I struggle with it hard. in so many ways in life all the time. But uh, now it makes me think we should probably do a whole episode on like anxiety in relationships and dating. Oh, I think totally. That's, that's mostly actually what it is for me. Yeah. And I think something that plays into that, that I've wanted to talk about, I think it would be great to like maybe do some more research or get somebody who's like a pro at this stuff. I have some friends who are marriage and family therapists who like know Mm. a lot about it is attachment styles. I feel like Mm. that has so much to do with anxiety and dating and understanding your attachment style and why it is that way and your partners. And like, that's really helped me with my anxiety. So yeah, no time to talk about it now, but um, maybe in a future episode. And I would encourage people to just like research that if it sounds like something that could help you. Yeah. That's a really good one. Girl, I think we did it. We did it. I think I think now we're dating on um, experts, professionals. Wow. I'll never I'll never make another mistake in my life. I don't I don't, <laughs> see, I don't see any spirals in my future. And dare I say, I'm dating perfectly now. What about in mine? Do you think I'm gonna stop spiraling anytime soon? Or I see a lot of spirals for you. Actually, <laughs> you're, you're not quite where I am yet. Yeah. I'm what but... they call enlightened. Yeah, but there's time for you. I'm going to keep trying, you know, you give me yeah. something to work towards and that's, that's really, I'm a I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yes. Um, yeah. I don't really know anything about anything, but this is fun to talk about. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> right, in, right into me about, right into me about all the ways I'm wrong and all the ways I'm messing up because I, I honestly do want to know, but just be nice when you say it. Yeah, please. We're all just doing our best. I said it at the beginning. I'll say it again now. I'm doing it's my animal worst. style. I'm doing, this. I'm doing my animal style. I'm doing my animal <laughs> style as best as I can possibly do it, but that doesn't make it any less animalistic. You know what I mean? Bring us out, girl. This is pretty fun. If you have someone in your life that you think could benefit, they're doing the dating struggle and you're fucking tired of talking to them, which is pretty much what happens when you're struggling <laughs> with dating. It's like you're insufferable as I continue to be. Um, send them this episode. I bet it will be a little bit of comfort or maybe they'll hate it. I, I really don't know what they'll feel. I don't know them. They'll um, be able to spend some time not thinking about if somebody's going to text them back and just listening yeah. to a podcast instead. And that's a gift. Love it. You can give a friend. You can follow us on Instagram.com. Not for everyone pod with number four, Jessica. Oh, I just called you Jessica. That's sweet. I love when you do that. Oh, it reminds me of looking home. Into your, yeah, your deep brown eyes. And I just was in your soul. Jessica is what I called her as children before as i was we were, yeah trying to be cool just before cool your, your animal style yeah, yeah. right <laughs> uh, you can find jessica at J- on instagram jc bakey 
I would prefer you find me on YouTube, Carolyn Winkler, girl, I'll see you there. And thanks for hanging out today. None of us are doing it right, but you don't have to do it right. Whatever. It's just a numbers game. You're probably ready to meet somebody. You're putting in the work and like freaks be freaks, hoes be hoes. Like you've been able to make Ooh. a friend before. You can make a connection romantically too. It just takes being in the right place and say no to the wrong people. And we're your friends. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel like I saw a lot of Why YouTube you comments that? recently because you just said you've been able to make a friend before. And I feel like I saw a lot of oh, YouTube okay. comments recently that were like, <laughs> like where is that I feel from? like I don't have friends because I moved to a new city, but you guys feel like my friends. Guess what? You we made friends, friends right here. Congratulations. Yeah. I, I will carry this torch of friendship for as long as I possibly can. Um, And this ed- episode was edited by Prince Abby, Abby Newhouse. She's a prince. She edits our podcast whenever we can hold her down and make her do it and i really really appreciate that you can hire her for your editing needs your audio editing find her on instagram and dm her at abby newhouse it's spelled exactly how you think it is a b no no house oh no one would ever think it was spelled that way we mean yeah exactly. i know but then i said it you mean, the but fuck? then i said a b i it's it's spelled the exact way that you would never think it would be spelled also Something with how I read stuff, I just always think of her as Abby Winehouse because the letters are confusing to me. So it's neither Abby is spelled how I think, <laughs> nor is her last name what I want it to be. So that really, so I really disagree. Figure that out, I Prince. really disagree with your statement. <laughs> well, okay. It's in the description down below. So you'll find it there. And uh, she's great. And we thank her. And we thank you. Until next time, babies. Bye. Bye.